Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the Week. This one is really interesting because we have a ton of CPU related news and it's not just Intel and AMD. There have been some massive developments in recent years, but especially the past couple of weeks on ARM based solutions. Looking forward to 2024, 2025 timeline for a lot of those CPUs coming out. Now, many of these are server class. Some of them, however, are consumer focused, starting with laptops. So that's going to be a big part of the news this week. There's information stemming from Microsoft, kind of at the forefront of a lot of this. Uh, and in addition to Microsoft, there's news from Qualcomm. There's news from Fei Tung, which is a Chinese chip designer, from Socyan Next, which is a, a Japanese chip designer. Additionally, there's some more leaks and rumors for the RTX 4080 Super, including a 20 gigabyte capacity rumor, uh, and there's some Threadripper leaks. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lexar Thor Memory. Lexar's new Thor DDR5 and DDR4 RAM includes a heavy duty aluminum heat spreader while retaining a relatively low profile form factor for PCs with tighter air cooler clearance. The Lexar Thor memory supports both Expo and Intel XMP timings and is available from DDR5-5600 to DDR5-6000 CL32. Learn more at the link in the description below. First up, really quick recap on the Cat Angels drive that we did recently. So we recently ran a donation drive where we were giving some percentage of our sales revenue from the GN store plus whatever viewer donations came through to the local cat shelter, Cat Angels, which is a nonprofit shelter we've supported since 2019 now, is when we built them uh, their system for doing adoption forms in their, in their location. So they've been trying to move their operation to a new location, and uh, we wanted to help provide some additional funding to support that move. So we ended up not being the only ones in the donation drive, which is always awesome to see. Uh, and in addition to the GN store split, Many of you all also gave directly to them. They emailed us. We'll share that with you in a second. And combined with these and one of our suppliers who contributed some additional funding and the GN store uh, contribution, we've been able to raise over $3,000 for the local shelter, which, like I said, we always really like supporting them. We've supported a lot of different groups over the years, but the local ones specifically, it's nice because we've been there, we know some of the people, and it's a small operation and it really goes to use. And if you walk in there to adopt a cat, you'll see exactly where it goes to use. So uh, anyway, when we first announced the drive, they sent us this email. They said, uh, Dear Stephen, thanks so much for sending your supporters our way to help with our move. We're seeing gifts coming in and we are incredibly grateful. Your supporters are absolutely tremendous. So once again, they get to see the best side of this industry, which is nice. It's nice to see that every now and then. Uh, let's just keep them out of the comments section next time there's some kind of major AMD Intel launch where maybe there's some brand wars in the comments section. Let's, let's not show them that part of the industry. Just the good stuff, we'll, we'll keep it to that. So uh, they have only the best impressions of what computer hardware enthusiasts are like, and we'll, we'll leave them out of the rest of the brand bickering. Okay, so uh, some good news to share up front, and we're sending that over to them before this video goes live. So uh, thank you everyone for participating. We always love supporting groups like that, again, especially when they're local, because we can see the impact. Okay, NVIDIA and AMD are allegedly making some ARM-based CPUs. This is the first of the big news for this week on CPU advancements in general, almost all centered around ARM. So this past week, Reuters reported that NVIDIA and AMD are both working on ARM chips, and Semi-Accurate had previously reported on AMD's plans to make ARM-based CPUs. But the new part here is the NVIDIA uh, part of the story. According to the report, Microsoft is currently engaging with hardware manufacturers in a bid to compete with Apple's ARM-based solutions. Microsoft additionally wants CPU designers to include AI acceleration hardware at a chip level, and it's likewise eyeing battery life increases that could be gained by dumping the x86 architecture or at least the CPUs as they exist today. Previously, Semi-Accurate stated that Microsoft made a deal with Qualcomm for notebook CPUs. The new Reuters report agreed with this statement and further claimed that Qualcomm currently has an exclusivity agreement with Microsoft through 2024 for assistance in developing AI features for ARM-based CPUs for laptops. Reuters sources point to a potential 2025 release, so the sources to the publication noted that AMD or NVIDIA could both be shipping ARM-based CPUs by then. Uh, NVIDIA already has a Grace Hopper combination, you might remember that. So they've got some ARM stuff in play already, 
But this is something different. Reuters is focused on consumer laptops for this story. And that's a market that NVIDIA hasn't yet gotten into outside of its GPUs. It's done some small devices with things like Tegra in the past. But this would be different based on the report. And we're not sure if that 2025 date is realistic. That seems awfully close for something we're only just now hearing about. But NVIDIA has been overall good at keeping secrets uh, until relatively close to product launches. So it's possible that they're further along than the timing of this information indicates. The main takeaway from the story, though, appears to be that Microsoft is effectively trying to assemble an Avengers of PC hardware manufacturers uh, because Microsoft and the PC hardware manufacturers who work with it are in a mostly unique position in that there's uh, some crossover with Apple sometimes, but a mostly unique position where the entire ecosystem is not controlled largely by one company. So Microsoft trying to work with these companies, uh, being three major ones now to produce ARM-based CPUs, so Qualcomm, AMD, and NVIDIA at least working directly with Microsoft uh, with a partial AI focus, that is almost certainly a response to Apple's sort of newfound dominance with its M1, M2 designs and solutions it's been pushing the last couple years now. So the market is starting to get heated up in really interesting ways. And although the discussion right now is on kind of laptop CPUs, there's no doubt that this stuff will spread to higher performance class solutions uh, like in desktops or workstations in the future as well. But related to the last story, just a few days after it broke, Qualcomm announced its new Snapdragon X Elite CPUs. A couple things here. So first of all, we were very impressed with Qualcomm's inclusion of the letter X in the product name. That shows great market awareness. Uh, it's a huge advantage, as we know from the recent reviews, because it multiplies things. Unfortunately, Qualcomm needs at least six numbers to be able to compete with Intel and AMD. When it's just the letter X, it's just, it's just not there yet. Maybe there's specs that mean more than a name. We'll see. We'll start with Qualcomm's own statement. They said, quote, built for AI, Snapdragon X Elite is the most powerful, intelligent, and efficient processor ever created for Windows in its class. The statement then goes on to mostly talk about responsiveness and multitasking workloads. So uh, the new Qualcomm processor is supposed to begin shipping in mid-2024, as we understand it right now. And Qualcomm says that this is a laptop-focused CPU. Qualcomm has struggled to get a foothold in a market outside of its core developments and, and outside of mobile especially. Uh, but its 2021 Nuvia acquisition, which was uh, over a billion dollars, was intended to change that. So the new 12-core CPU is using the Orion architecture, and it holds a 3.8 gigahertz all-core clock or 4.3 gigahertz for a one to two core turbo, as we understand it now. In Qualcomm's slides, it states that its new CPU can match the performance of an Intel i7-1360P 12 core CPU at 68% less power. Now, Qualcomm's real target isn't Intel, though. This time around, the target is Apple. And that's why it's focusing so much on the power efficiency specifications, because that's where Apple's been able to start gaining an edge over Intel and in some of these mobile uh, or notebook solutions. Qualcomm claims a 50% faster peak multi-threaded performance than Apple's M2 in this regard. In Geekbench testing, Geekbench isn't that great of a representation. It's a single benchmark. Uh, it does single and multi-core testing, and we don't use it for testing, but it's a, it's a baseline number to start with. Obviously, you would need independent reviews to really derive any meaning from it and we're not at that point yet. Uh, the solutions IGP thus far is undetailed. It did say that DirectX 12 is supported at this time, and it has hardware accelerated AV1 encode and decode on the packaged solution. Drivers are going to be the universal issue, as always, for new GPU developments. And uh, integrated or not, that'll be the real place for Qualcomm to prove itself. A software translation will be another big challenge here, moving to ARM from, say, x86 approaches. So uh, Qualcomm is going to need a strong solution there. Apple has its Rosetta 2 layer that acts as the compatibility layer for its own hardware. And Valve, if you look at something a little bit different, but operating with Linux as its operating system, uh, so we're talking about OS differences primarily here, but operating within Linux for the Steam Deck, it's done great things contributing to Proton to help do some of that compatibility translation for games. And actually, uh, the Valve implementations on the Steam Deck sometimes can perform better for frame times 
than the Windows implementations we've seen on some other devices. Now, a lot of this comes down to power gating behavior. We'll talk about that in a separate piece as the Ally continues to roll out BIOS updates. But anyway, the big news here is Qualcomm's CPU announcement following up this Reuters report on a brief exclusivity window and future NVIDIA and AMD parts. We've got two more entrants to the storyline. So there's Fei Tung, which is a, a Chinese CPU chip designer. And then there's an entry from Susai Next, which is a Japanese firm that we'll be talking about uh, after the story. So first up, Chinese company Fei Tung recently showcased its new data center CPU. And uh, there was a story originally posted by Chinese language publication uh, IG Wei, which was picked up by Tom's Hardware. We're not sure if the original was just a press release, a republisher, or an actual news report. But the company's English name is a sound translation from its Mandarin name. So this group, Fei Tung, goes by Phidium in, uh, in English. That's a sound translation. And in Chinese, the name Fei Tung means soar, like the verb to soar. Fei Tung previously landed on the US entity list, which blocked its access to US advanced technologies. That can be a death sentence for some companies. So that was in 2021. The company had unveiled its 2500 uh, series CPU back in 2020 originally. But this recent story, being in 2023 now, has popped up because it was in a display. The press release or the report, we're not sure which it is on IG Way, notes that Fei Tung showcased its Tung Yun uh, S 2564 core server CPU on an ARM V8 ISA uh, and using a large L3 cache. 2020 reports of the design indicated a 96 megabyte cache planned for this CPU. This is another ARM CPU though on the market. And although it's dated by standards of incumbents like AMD and Intel, the reappearance of it was timely given the prior news item. Now the final entry in our lineup of international chip development, been a lot of news in, in CPUs and especially ARM this past week. This one comes from Japan where chip designer uh, Sosaya Next posted a press release about a two nanometer TSMC collaboration with ARM solutions once again. The press release says this, quote, Sosai Next today announced a collaboration with ARM and TSMC for the development of an innovative power optimized 32 core CPU chiplet on TSMC's two nanometer silicon technology, delivering scalable performance for hyperscale data center servers, five and six G infrastructure, CPU and edge of network markets. The press release stated that the new chiplet proof of concept is intended as a server solution. The CPU will be a chiplet design and it can be customized per customer needs. So it's effectively a customizable CPU for server and enterprise customers. Not sure we used the word custom enough there, but hopefully we did. So Cyanex said its solution will run 32 ARM Neoverse cores, and this is scalable beyond 32 cores, depending on how the chiplets are added to CPU packages. Samples for these will be shipping in the first half of 2025. No clue when uh, full scale production will be happening yet, but uh, ARM's already been fairly strong over the years and it might have a stronger future in just the next couple of years. So things are gonna get really interesting, even in the desktop enthusiast market, as uh, you know, not necessarily just this, this one company, but as these ARM-based CPU solutions and whatever the AI sort of, uh, we'll call it co-processing element, as they start to take hold and get continued pushing by Microsoft as bids to compete with Apple. Up next, Twitter leaker BenchLeaks recently posted an alleged Geekbench 6 benchmark result for AMD's new Threadripper Pro 7985WX CPU, which uh, is the 64 core 128 thread variant. The scoring indicates a 2599 single thread result and a 24,780 multi-thread result. Those are points for Geekbench. And the Geekbench listing names the Threadripper CPU directly. Using Geekbench to compare against similar results, Tom's Hardware dug up some scores for the prior Threadripper Pro 5995WX CPU at 2033 single and 20,105 multi-core scores, and the Xeon Platinum 8490H at 1842 and 16,308. And that's about all there is for this particular story. Now, Threadripper is not actually that far away at this point, so waiting for the real benchmarks isn't going to be a problem. It's looking like uh, November 21st is when AMD is targeting. That was official news just a week or two ago at this point. Uh, all right, next one. Rumors of the 4080 Super have exploded over the past week. It was a slow start where uh, originally a couple weeks ago, there was one news story about it. And as we reported last week, we didn't think it was particularly worthwhile reporting on because there, there wasn't much information. It was a couple lines in a tweet and it didn't have uh, much to back it up. But 
we ended up running the story anyway because there were a couple more leaks that came out the same week. And now there's more still. So to recap it for you, there are currently three rumored refresh SKUs for the RTX 40 series. These could be supers or they could use a different name entirely, but uh, the, the current sort of leaked nomenclature indicates 4080 super and maybe a 4070 or 4070 Ti refresh as well. To get you up to date on the newest round of information from the past couple days, so video cards picked up claims that the 4080 Super might feature 20 gigabytes of memory originating from BenchLife. The BenchLife leak suggests that there are three upcoming refreshes, which aligns with the prior leaks, and that would have the rumored 4080 variant as the 20 gigabyte GDDR6X solution. It may or may not get that super branding. We'll see. In video cards reporting of these leaks, it also cited the PCI ID list as having received an update stating AD103 RTX 4080 Super something that forum laptop video to go posted originally. So rumors over the past couple of months have gone back and forth over which specific GPU die a 4080 refresh might use. Uh, 8103 is the most recent one that we've seen pointed to. If it's 8103, there's not a lot of room for a core count increase there because the existing 4080 on 8103 has 9,728 CUDA cores and that leaves only about 5% of the die for an increase. So if NVIDIA goes that direction, the maximum core count for a 4080 refresh would be 10,240, which again, is about a 5% swing. So they would need some other changes to make it really interesting, unless NVIDIA plans on keeping the same or very similar pricing to what's available right now, MSRP notwithstanding. Uh, either way, that it, it seems it'd be a little weird for them to out right replace the 4080 with a fully populated die just because there might be yield problems at that point. Uh, it may be that NVIDIA is pushing for some competition with AMD's upper end 7900 XT, uh, which has recently dropped in price, and 7900 XTX. Now, since we filmed this, there's been another development for these rumors. The newest rumor posted just days ago was from Copite 7 Kimmy claiming a 4080 with a fully populated 8103-400 die but no mention of 20 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's a big difference from other rumors lately. Video cards' updated chart with rumored cards marked with the blue new tag suggests maybe it's 16 gigabytes after all, but it seems like this is a place where everyone's in disagreement as to what it's actually gonna be. They also suggest a combination of TI and Super for the 4070 via the Copite 7 Kiwi tweet, and this would be an unlikely naming combination, but technically a possible one. NVIDIA's certainly done weird things with names over the years. The 4070 Super is listed as well, posting a much larger uplift in core count as a percentage of the base 4070. So that one's probably more meaningful as a, as a change. The most important thing here is the prices, what NVIDIA does with the existing cards and what they do with these new ones. But then in terms of takeaways, Clearly, the rumors have been far less predictable for these cards than many of the others we've seen in the past. The rumor rail has a lot of conflicting information on the memory capacity, the names of the cards. We also haven't seen any solid evidence from partners uh, or filings suggesting an imminent launch. There's really not enough concrete at this point to have confidence in the exact specs either. The only thing that seems somewhat reliable is that there'll be a refresh. And so at this point, we're going to stop reporting on the... 40 refresh story until there's something more concrete because it is all over the place. So maybe a lower volume fully populated die that gives NVIDIA something that's cheaper than a 4090 class card to manufacture so it can sell it for less uh, without necessarily having its most competitive offering priced as much higher uh, than the XT and the XTX as it is right now. So anyway, that's the rumors on the 4080. We'll report on it more as it continues to develop. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time.